This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. I was up here speaking on sorghum insects, uh, of course the main one being the sugarcane aphid or SCA. It's been a problem since 2013 or 14, but problem has kind of started declining and I just talked about why that is. People planting more tolerant hybrids, farmers doing a better job of scouting, getting more predator populations, that kind of stuff. I just kind of give them a synopsis of what's happened in the last five or six years on sugarcane aphids talked a little bit about corn leaf aphids that were an issue through a very small strip of ground through eastern Texas Panhandle, eastern Oklahoma Panhandle, parts of southwest Kansas, parts of the west central Kansas last year. Had a couple of producers say, oh, that's what I had last year. Nobody knew what it was. So it, that was kind of fun to kind of let them know what we had found out and talked about headworm control, some new biologicals that are out there that are safe on predators talked a little bit about chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are a huge issue through this part of the world. North central Oklahoma, south central Kansas have historically been a problem. So showed them some of our uh, plot pictures that we took last year on how we can maybe combat having chinch bugs. Talked a little bit about uh, the sorghum midge, had a problem in north central Kansas with sorghum midge last year. How it's probably traditionally not going to be a problem but if we get into scenario where planting windows are extended two to four weeks on the later planted stuff, the sorghum midge can be a huge issue. So variety selection is always important. You know, you've got to plant a hybrid that is agronomically sound for your area, and then hopefully you can find one that's got SCA tolerance, stay green, some of these other traits in there. The SCA tolerance allows you to have to spray later for the sugarcane aphid. The staggering trait is one that lets you withstand periods of drought. It lets that plant go ahead and do photosynthesis because a hybrid that doesn't have staggering in it will uh, start senescing leaves. So if it does rain, it kind of causes problems. The staggering trait also brings charcoal rot resistance in, allows that plant to stand better in the fall. The whole, the whole goal is to harvest what you grow. The staggering trait, that's basically what it does. It allows you to harvest what you actually grow. You have a sorghum and wheat you together. They, those, most guys that grow sorghum grow wheat and they grow it in some type of a rotation. There's benefits there. Uh, S&W wants to be part of sorghum use. Is it allows us to get with a group of producers in one spot that we probably would have a hard time getting to separately. You know, you'll get I don't know, it looks like 200, 250 people here today. For us to get in front of 250 farmers, we would have to drive, I don't know, I'm telling how many miles we have to drive. So this gets them coming by our booth, visiting with us, lets them get our story out there, lets them know what we are doing, what things are coming in the future and that kind of stuff. S&W bought uh, the Chromatin company back last October. But s and they were started by two ranchers in the, California. They hired an alfalfa breeder because they didn't like the alfalfa that they could buy. So they hired their own breeder and that's how s and got started. They slowly expanded. They wanted to get other crops. So last October they bought Chromatin. Most of us that stayed, that were working for Chromatin Sorghum Partners, they kept on board as a sales staff and the support staff. So. Uh, a lot of that hasn't changed, just uh, S&W, the Sorghum Partners brand's not going anywhere because they realize having that brand out there, people know what it is. People know who Sorghum Partners is. Mm -hmm.